Revelation 3, 7 to 13. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, apply. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more and I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and shuts. The key of David and the opening and shutting of the door certainly can be applied to mission work and that's, I suppose, the most common um, application of this. That there are times in the history of a congregation, of a church, where the door is open and we see growth. Sometimes in some congregations, what would we say, phenomenal growth? And then there are times when you know, no matter what you do, no matter what you try, it's not growing. It's shrinking. The Lord opens and the Lord shuts. It could also be applied to the forgiveness of sins. Because what does the word do? It opens and it closes. Jesus, when he appeared to the disciples on Easter evening, gave them those keys, didn't he? When he says, whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. the opening and the closing of the door to happen. And while it is true that the sins of the world have been forgiven, it is only through faith that the door of heaven is opened. And the one who has faith repents of their sins, desires and seeks to live the righteous life, The door of heaven is open and those who persist and do not repent and remain impenitent and reject the word, the door is shut. And Jesus has the key. And Jesus is the key. We could apply it also to the presence of the Word. 
writer to the Hebrews quoting the Psalms says, Today if you will hear my voice, do not harden your hearts that you may enter into your rest. The word, as long as it remains present, opens the door. And when it is gone, the door is shut. Again, because it gives faith. And it certainly can be applied to the day of judgment. Again, faith, right? Faith in Jesus. Think of the parable of the five wise and foolish virgins. The five wise had faith, and they entered in, and the door was shut, and the others came and pounded on the door, and the door was not open. Faith is the key.